everyone, my name is Rebecca and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this DIY record bag. Now I first saw these at a craft fair that I was at with my mum and they were running for about $60 each and yeah they were custom made but who really wants to spend that much on something so basic? So I went to my Good Sammies and I got large records for $2. They also had smaller ones for a dollar each, but I decided not to end up making a clutch with it because I'll show you this. I found that the smaller records were more inclined to break when I was drilling them. I've got a big chip here and I've also got a large crack. You see my point? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, not the best to use. I would recommend sticking with the larger records and just making a big bag with them. Now, I gotta stress, don't take your parents' records to use for this project. They're so cheap at thrift stores and op shops that it's really not worth it. Especially if you're gonna break them. Now, I really like this bag. I find it quite useful. I can fit a lot of stuff in there and it actually folds flat when you've got nothing in there. So it can hold quite a lot and it is quite strong. But if I want to, I can just have it flat. And I've actually sewn a little button that can pop together. And that just keeps it a bit more flat if you've got nothing in there and you don't really want to be taking around a chunky bag. I also like that I've got two different colours on it. So if I want, it can match my outfit just a little bit more, you know. Now, just a heads up, I used a drill for this. I've seen tutorials where people use heat tools to puncture the records. And to some extent that seems a lot easier, but also I don't have one of those. I don't know where you get one and mine all seems a bit toxic. I don't know. Just for the drilling stage, I would recommend getting some parental help. It can be dangerous. You are using a power tool. Please make sure you tie up your hair and you wear some safety glasses. You don't want to get any of that in your eye. The thought of getting my hair caught in a drill terrifies me. Absolutely terrifies me. So please, please, please be careful. Also, another thing about this is that you do have to use a sewing machine. Uh, you can use glue if you prefer, but I sewed my bag just because I wanted to make sure it was a bit stronger. I tend to put more and more things in my bag depending on the size and this is a big bag. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and let's get into it. So the first thing I did was use a measuring tape and a piece of chalk to mark one centimeter lines across the diameter of the record. I use these markings to keep my holes evenly spaced in the drilling stage. I balanced the record off the side of a table and rotated it around until I had all my holes drilled. Now as you can see some records are more fragile than others and the drill made this one chip and crack so you have to be more careful in the drilling process if you're using more fragile records like this one. So the drill bit left some little fuzzy record bits at the end of all the holes and I basically dealt with these by picking them off where I could but they could get quite stubborn so in the end for some of them I ended up using a nail file just to get rid of the last little bits. So measuring around the side of my record, I found out that it was 95 centimeters and 37 inches in diameter. The next step is measuring out the fabric. I want the bag to be 20 centimeters wide to be proportional to the sheer size of the LP. The next thing I'm going to do is place my zip. I'm doing this step now because it would be more difficult to sew once the fabric is connected to the records. Another option is gluing the zip. Sewing can be a bit time consuming, but I think it's worth it for the things that you want to last longer. 
I'm putting the zip in the exact centre of my fabric because I want the edges of the fabric to face the bottom and the zip to face the top. As you can see, I'm pinning the edges of the zip to the edges of the cut in the bag. This way both raw edges will face the inside of the bag. So now I'm going to sew the strap. If you want, you could use a belt, some ribbon or a different type of fabric to make your strap but I'm just going to use the same fabric so it will match. Because it's custom, you could either make the strap a one size deal like I am, or alternatively, if you use something like a belt, then you can adjust the length as you go. So I've gone away and I've sewn the strap together to the length and the width that I prefer. Now I'm going to pin it to the bag at the areas that I want, and that is to both sides of the zip. Pinning it this way so then once I sew, I have the raw edges facing the inside. I will then sew a square around it with a cross in the middle just to add some more strength and durability. So I folded the fabric inside out and I've measured out the excess fabric based on the size of my record's diameter. Again, I'm going to keep the raw edge on the inside and flip this fabric over for when I sew. I'm going to sew in a square again with a cross over the middle just to strengthen the bag because the bottom of the bag will be taking the weight of everything that's inside. It's a circle. Now I'm using a needle and thread to sew the fabric to the record through the drill bit holes. The raw edge of the fabric is on the inside so I'm sewing through both the outside layer and the raw edge. I'm going through each hole twice and then crossing over to the next. A great thing about this fabric is that it's ribbed, so I can sew through the same line around the record and know that my stitches are even. Well, mostly even. It can look a little bit messy and because I use black against white fabric, it stands out. So what I'm going to do is grab some glue and some thin black ribbon and glue the ribbon around the bag just to make it look a little bit more neat. And voila! There you go, your very own DIY record bag. See ya!